Welcome back into K-State Online. I am Mason Phillips, joined by Drew Galloway, our best recruiting guru, information finder, whatever you want to call him. He's got the uh, lowdown and the best information you can find and insight on what K-State is doing in the recruiting world, and you can find it all over at kstateonline.com with On3. And we come to you because there's another commit for the Wildcats. They have added a very talented player, somebody that they were able to flip from what used to be a P5 school. But they are adding, yeah, RIP. They are adding Trey Davis, a wide receiver out of the state of Texas. He's a four star if you look at the on three rankings uh, and had been committed to Washington State. This is one K State's been working on for a while, but during that time, it seemed like K State was going to be the ultimate landing spot uh, most of the way. And now it's come to fruition. So Trey Davis is a wildcat. Uh, what what do we need to know about this ad for for K State and what you know Avery Johnson might have at receiver for years to come? Uh, the the biggest thing that you need to know with Trey Davis is he has speed in bunches. The one thing that really pops when you watch him is, uh, although his competition level not great, not great for Texas football, but you see that he is playing at a different speed than everybody else on the field. Where at K State right now the one thing that you feel like you're kind of lacking is that top end speed. It's why we saw Jace Brown really break out this season as a true freshman where the receivers were more possession receivers. And now you got Trey Davis coming in. You had Jace Brown in the last class, even uh, Jaquez Bradley Dempster extent is pretty fast. So you're seeing kind of the, a shift in philosophy a little bit. And it's not just on three that has him as a four star. ESPN has him as a four star now. And 247 Sports is really close to having him as a four star. So Trey Davis will come in. And I know rankings aren't the end all be all. I mean, we, we've seen it <laughs> from the lower ranking, the lower rated kids in the 23 class that really stepped up. And we've seen high end guys kind of not always produce. Uh, but Trey Davis will come in and be the number two player in the K-State class, according to the on three industry rankings, just behind Gus Hawkins. So we're, we're seeing K-State's recruiting profile take another jump. Uh, Trey Davis will also be commitment number six this season. That is a, a four star ranking on at least one uh, recruiting service. Yeah, look, the the level of which they're they're starting to bring guys in, it's it's significant. It's helpful. And this feels like another receiver that um, even though there's going to be some question marks and some uncertainty with Colin Klein leaving, this feels like an addition at receiver that is due to what Colin Klein was able to do as coordinator and try and, and, and kind of make K-State a more attractive spot for people that want to make plays in an offense. And obviously Avery Johnson is, is a big part of it too. Guys would want to play with that. Um, this is just overall a, a nice addition for, for K-State who obviously – it's it's been late adding guys to the high school class. It, it's it's a smaller class. Um, what should we expect from Trey Davis when he actually gets to K State? How how quick can he see the field, and, and what happens when he does eventually get out there? Uh, the one thing that I think that you can really expect out of Trey Davis is he might be somebody that's ready to play right away. I know that the the size is a little concerning at only 171 pounds right now. And he's not an early enrollee, but he's somebody that I think could make an impact on special teams right away. Uh, I mean, you look at Trey Davis's high school career, and uh, are, are you ready for this? Uh, he he is the troop high school uh, leader in most receptions in a game, most receptions in a season, most receptions in a career, most receiving yards in a game, career, and season, most touchdowns in a game, season, and career, and most return yards in a game, season, and career. So he had a very productive high school career, and don't forget that he's also a very good basketball player and has scored over a thousand points in his basketball career. So he's just an all-around athlete. And if you want to see kind of how explosive he can be, there there's a pretty good clip of him on his Twitter Twitter page, and I think it was August, uh, where he gets up and just absolutely hammers home a dunk. <laughs> so he he he's a very big time athlete which, I mean, we've seen that at K-State before because Avery Johnson was a good baseball player. Will Ancio was a good basketball player. It's like we're, we're seeing guys that before uh, choosing to do football only, you could say, oh, they're kind of small. But it's because they're just constantly in shape. Like, 
Trey Davis hasn't had a break because he he does track baseball and football. So like he hasn't had a full season to just lift and get bigger and stronger. But that that's the one thing that like when you see him, if he gets up to like the 190, 200 pound range, if, and if he keeps that speed, he's going to be tough to stop. Well, this this just kind of goes into what we've seen the the recruiting philosophy be with Chris Kleiman for the entire time that he's been at K-State where it's, okay, let's get these guys in here that they have the the athleticism and the skills that are projectable, and we'll figure out how to use them in and, and whatever way actually suits them best when they get here. And Trey Davis is a guy that, like, you have all those, you know, traits and abilities that stand out right now. And like you're saying, just wait until this guy is only focusing on football and he has a Big 12, you know, coaching staff and strength and conditioning staff behind him. This is a really exciting get for K-State. And then, you know, you throw on top of it that we have the anecdotal evidence of what Jace Brown was able to come in and do as a true freshman this year when, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel, but my in, my expectation last year when, when Jace Brown came to K-State, I was not banking on him being a guy we saw on the field in the capacity that we did this season. Yeah, Jace Brown was a guy that I thought that maybe after a redshirt season, like he could potentially like work his way into the rotation. But then, but then you look at it, and he was uh, the second highest uh, yards for a receiver this season. Because I mean, Ben Sennett was the leader, and then Philip Brooks was second, and then it was Jace Brown. So you, you just never know sometimes. And Trey Davis has a trait that will probably get him on the field early if he can get up to speed in the, in the playbook and everything, because you have to remember Jace Brown had the advantage of coming in early where Trey Davis plays basketball is runs track. So he won't be on campus in January. Uh, another thing that is going to be fun for whoever the new offensive coordinator is, is if you watch Trey Davis's highlights, he's lined up all over the field. They have him at receiver. They have him at running back. He, I think he even has to play as that Wildcat quarterback. So the Troop knew this is our best player. Well, let's get him the ball. So it's exciting to think about, like, potentially if you want to get the matchup. I mean, the, the Dolphins do it with Tyree Kill sometimes. Uh, the Chiefs have done it with Kadarius Tony, where if you can get your explosive receiver in for at least a snap at running back, you're going to get him a mismatch with a linebacker most likely on him. And with Trey Davis's speed, you you assume that he's just going to be faster than the linebacker that's on the other side. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to see how it all works out now. Overall, what what is the the look and feel of this K-State recruiting class with the addition of Trey Davis and, and maybe what people should expect next? Uh, this class is coming together pretty nicely. I mean, you, you see that there aren't a ton of high school commits but they they weren't anticipating a bunch of high school commits in this class to begin with. So we'll see more of a focus on the transfer portal going forward or the JUCO ranks. Um, another guy that you should really kind of keep an eye on is uh, Devon Rice uh, from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. He was an official visitor over the weekend. Um, but you'll see that this class, for as few guys as there are, it's going to be... Pretty similar if you look at uh, their average ranking. If not, this class might be a little bit better uh, than last year's even. So you kind of see where that goes from here. Um, another uh, little fun anecdotal fact for you. Today is actually Trey Davis's birthday when he's announcing his commitment. So that, that's kind of why he decided to wait because he took the visit to K-State. And then almost instantly when he got home, decommitted from Washington State. And everybody kind of anticipated that that meant a, a K-State commitment right away. But he he decided to wait and wanted to wait until his birthday to announce his commitment. Well, he becomes the 12th commit of the K-State class of 2024. And uh, like you mentioned earlier, becomes yet another one that has four-star status from at least one of the recruiting services. And with Trey Davis, it also comes down to like, this isn't just hey one one has him and it's ESPN or something you know where we can kind of dog that. Uh, this is you know on three has him as a four star. He's on the edge there with twenty four seven. This is one that by the end it could be one of those that that might ultimately be a consensus or close to it that hey he's a four star type of guy. And either way, 
the talent and the skills are there. People should be excited about this one. This seems like a really good get for K State and a guy that, you know, it, it, you see the skill set and you think of what's going on here. There are opportunities for young guys to get into this offense pretty quick, as we now know, especially at the receiver spot. Uh, he may ultimately be on the field next year contributing for K-State. And it's uh, the second um, four-star receiver uh, that K-State's landed from uh, the, on, the on three uh, rankings as well, yeah. because Jaquez Bradley Demps also a four-star and I, I believe now five of the six uh, four stars that K State's landed on one service are all on the offensive side of the ball. So I mean that that's exciting when you think about the future. Yeah, that that is really exciting because uh, one thing that people are probably starving for is more playmakers on the K State offense, and it seems like some help is on the way. So. We will see what comes next for the Wildcats in recruiting. But as for now, it's a big win as they get Trey Davis to come to town and uh, big things probably expected of him to fit into the offense with Avery Johnson at quarterback. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Head over to kstateonline.com at on3 for all of your K-State recruiting and team news, both basketball and football, getting to be another busy time of the year. Signing day rapidly approaching so that will be uh something to keep in the back of everybody's heads as k-state gets ready to sign this class of guys and anytime a commit happens you can come to the k-state online youtube we will have you covered with the breakdown and the info you need to know about the latest wildcats so that will do it for us thank you for watching k-state online